The NBA in the 1970s was a complete disaster. Rampant drug use, racial tension, declining attendance and revenues, and fierce competition from the ABA put professional basketball in jeopardy. Even after the two leagues merged and the talent level skyrocketed, there was still a lot of uncertainty about the future of the league. But that all changed on March 26, 1979, Two of college basketball's biggest stars faced off for the first time in the NCAA Finals. One was a high school superstar, considered by many to be the best player in the US. The other was an unknown talent that took the basketball world by storm and led his small town college to a national final. No one knew it yet, but the decade long rivalry between these two men would not only save the NBA, but inspire an entire generation of basketball stars. This is the story of Magic and Bird. Larry Bird and Magic Johnson are widely considered two of the greatest basketball players in history. They combined for eight NBA titles, six MVPs, and 25 All-Star selections. Magic and Bird were the stars of the two most storied franchises in the NBA and their rivalry gave us some of the most memorable moments in sports history. But what made it so special? How did these two players change the NBA forever? Despite their mutual love for basketball, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson couldn't be more different. Irvin Magic Johnson was born in the capital city of Michigan in 1959. Thanks to his dad, Irvin Sr., Johnson grew up playing and watching basketball idolizing NBA stars like Earl Monroe and Bill Russell. He quickly developed into a dominant young player, averaging 29 points and 17 rebounds a game in high school. He earned his now infamous nickname, Magic, at just 15 years old, thanks to a local sports writer who witnessed him score 36 points. Magic finished his high school career with two All-State selections, a state championship, and was even named to the very first McDonald's All-American team. Larry Bird, on the other hand, had a much different start to his basketball career. Bird grew up in a small town in Indiana, home to just a thousand people. He grew up as a huge Pacers fan and started learning to play basketball in his front driveway. Bird also had an incredibly successful high school career. He averaged 31 points and 20 rebounds, but since competition in Southern Indiana wasn't that strong, Bird's skills were generally ignored. He only got one scholarship offer at Indiana University, which he accepted, but dropped out a month later, as he couldn't adjust to the big city of Bloomington. He worked a few odd jobs in his hometown for a year before recommitting to college, this time at Indiana State University. As for Magic, despite major interest from schools like UCLA and Kentucky, he too stayed close to home opting to play for Michigan State. Magic continued to impress on the court, averaging 17 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists per game. He put up similar stats the next season in 1979 and led his team to their first ever NCAA championship game. And that's where he met Larry Bird. Bird had dominated with Indiana State, putting up lucrative numbers in his three seasons with the team. And in 1979, Bird led the small town college to an undefeated 33-0 record and was named the College Player of the Year. He got Indiana State to their first NCAA tournament and carried them all the way to the finals. The 1979 championship matchup between Bird and Magic was one of the biggest games in college history and was the very first face-off between Bird and Magic. Right from tip-off, it was clear what Michigan State's game plan was. Stop Larry Bird. They put at least two men on him the entire time, which forced him to settle with tough outside shots. Bird still finished with 21 points, but did so on very bad efficiency. Meanwhile, Magic stayed composed and led the offense as usual, dropping 24 points and five assists en route to an 11-point Michigan State victory. Magic and Bird's first meeting was the most viewed college sports game of all time, with a whopping 35 million people tuning in live. 
and early on in their rivalry, it was Magic who had the upper hand. He was selected first overall by the Los Angeles Lakers in the 1979 draft, joining an already stacked roster with stars Jamal Wilkes and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Magic became the team's floor general at just 20 years old, running the fast-paced offense with flashy passes and fast breaks. The team earned the name Showtime for their entertaining style and quickly rose to the top of the standings. The Lakers finished with 60 wins, and Magic made his first All-Star game as a rookie, averaging 18 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists. And in the playoffs, Magic shined even more. He led the Lakers to the NBA Finals, and then was forced to play center for the series after Kareem went down with an injury. But Magic carried his team to a victory in 6 games, winning the title on the road with an incredible 42-point, 15-rebound performance. Magic became the first rookie to ever win a title and be selected as Finals MVP, but despite his incredibly successful first season, he placed second in Rookie of the Year voting to, you guessed it, Larry Bird. Bird also had an outstanding rookie campaign. He was drafted by the Celtics sixth overall and averaged an astonishing 21 points and 10 rebounds a game. Boston jumped from 29 wins the previous year to 61, the best record in the league. But unfortunately for Bird, he couldn't match Magic's team success, as the Celtics lost in five games to the 76ers in the Eastern Conference Finals. But in 1981, Bird got some much needed help thanks to a trade for star center Robert Parrish and a newly drafted rookie in Kevin McHale. The team increased their record to 62 and 20, got revenge on the 76ers in a hard fought seven game series, and then beat the Houston Rockets in six games in the finals to net Bird his first NBA title. By 1984, both Magic and Bird had solidified their place as the two best players in the league. Magic won his second ring with the Lakers in 1982, while Bird finally won his first league MVP trophy, putting up 24-10 while leading his team to a 62-win season. The Celtics dominated in the playoffs, reaching their second finals in five years, and they faced off against Magic and the Lakers. The Celtics-Lakers matchup is one of sports' most iconic rivalries. In the 60s, they faced off nine times in the NBA Finals, with the Celtics winning all nine matchups thanks to the dominance of Bill Russell. But the pendulum started to swing back in LA's favor in the 70s, and now with Bird and Magic as the face of both franchises, the rivalry reached an all-time high. Magic and the Lakers started off strong, stealing Game 1 on the road in Boston. They looked poised to do the same in Game 2, leading by 2 with just 20 seconds left. But a risky pass by James Worthy got stolen by Gerald Henderson, who tied the game up with a layup. Magic got the ball with seconds remaining, but inexplicably dribbled out the clock, and the Celtics would clinch the win in overtime. In Game 4, the Lakers looked poised to take a 3-1 series lead, but a few costly turnovers and a bad pass from Magic cemented a Celtics comeback to force overtime. Magic then missed two key free throws in the final frame that gave the game to Boston. And things got even worse in Game 7. The Lakers rallied from a large deficit to cut the lead to three, but with just a minute left, Magic got the ball stolen by Dennis Johnson, and the Seas iced the game with a pair of free throws. Magic was distraught after the series, as Celtics fans gave him the nickname Tragic Johnson. Bird, on the other hand, cemented his status as the league's best player. He averaged 27 points and 14 rebounds en route to his first Finals MVP trophy. The 1984 Championships was the first Finals aired live on the NBA's new TV deal, a risky bet by the association on their two young stars, and their investment paid off. Game 7 was the highest rated NBA game of all time, with over 20 million people tuning in. And the 1985 season looked to be even better, especially for the Celtics. Bird put up even better numbers than the year prior, 
and cruise to a second straight MVP trophy. Both the Lakers and the Celtics finished with 60 plus wins on the season and battled their way back to the NBA Finals. Ready for the rematch. Game one looked grim for the Lakers as the Celtics blew them out by 34 points. However, Magic decided to change game plans for game two and started feeding 38-year-old Kareem Abdul-Jabbar down low whenever he could. The duo was unstoppable for the rest of the series, with Kareem averaging 32 points and Magic racking up 14 assists per game. The Lakers won the series in six games, getting revenge for last year's defeat and netting Magic his third title. The 86 season looked to be a third straight finals matchup for Bird and Magic. Both had stellar seasons, with Bird winning his third straight MVP trophy, the first and only player to ever do so. Magic also put up some solid numbers, but the Lakers faltered early on, losing to the Rockets in five games. So Bird and the Celtics met a young Hakeem Olajuwon in the finals instead. Bird dominated once more, nearly averaging a triple-double, and led the Celtics to their third title of the decade. And while another NBA title was a great accomplishment, both Bird and Magic knew they had some unfinished business. Magic and Bird met for the third time in the 1987 Finals, but their roads to getting there were much different. The Lakers cruised through the West, including an easy sweep in the Conference Finals over the Seattle Supersonics. The Celtics had a much tougher time, barely escaping a seven-game brawl with the Bad Boy Pistons, where Bird needed 37 points in the final game to will his team to advance. And so, the Lakers looked much sharper in games one and two, outworking the Celtics to take a commanding lead in the series thanks to 32 and 29 points from Magic. But Bird responded with 30 and 12 of his own in game three, keeping the Celtics' hopes alive at 2-1, and Game 4 was much of the same, as the Celtics took an early lead and held it until deep into the fourth quarter. With just two minutes left, the Celtics held a seven-point lead, but a turnover gave Magic the ball on the fast break, who dished it to a wide-open Michael Cooper to cut the lead to three. And things only got worse, as Larry Bird whiffed on a pass to Kevin McHale, and then James Worthy sank a tough fadeaway to cut the lead to one. With 45 seconds remaining, Magic lobbed a perfect alley-oop pass to Kareem to take their first lead of the game, 104-103. But when the Celtics needed him most, Bird stepped up and sank a clutch three from the corner to take back the lead with just 12 seconds left. Kareem was fouled on the very next play but missed the game-tying free throw and sealed a Celtics Game 4 victory. Only, the ball was ruled out of bounds off of Kevin McHale. So at 106-105, Magic Johnson got the ball in the corner with seven seconds left. He drove to his right and put up a beautiful hook shot that swished through the hoop. Bird had one more chance to win the game for the Celtics, but his shot clanked off the back rim and the Celtics drop behind three games to one. And despite an impressive game five victory, the Lakers sealed the series at home in six, thanks to a 19 assist night from Magic. Magic took home his fourth championship and third finals MVP trophy, firmly establishing his lead in his rivalry with Bird. Many believed there would be more battles to come, but unfortunately, these finals were the last time Bird and Magic would face off in the playoffs. Larry Bird and the Celtics dynasty quickly fell apart as the aging roster was finally bested by the rising Detroit Pistons in the East playoffs in 88. Larry had repeated back injuries that destroyed the rest of his career. And despite playing through a few years of unbelievable pain, Bird was forced to retire in 1992 after 13 seasons as for Magic, his career continued to flourish, winning three league MVPs over a five-year span and a fifth championship, defeating the Detroit Pistons in a thrilling seven-game series. But unfortunately, in November of 1991, Magic Johnson suddenly retired, revealing that he had been diagnosed with HIV. The news came as a shock to the world 
and despite being voted into the 1992 All-Star Game. Many NBA players were against the idea of Magic competing, over fear of contamination. But the one player who stood by Magic's side was Larry Bird, supporting him both privately and in public. The day after the news, Larry hit a behind-the-back pass on a fast break as a nod to Magic and his greatness. And thankfully for fans, Bird and Magic came together for one last dance at the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. The two stars were the face of the dream team as they officially passed on the torch to the NBA's newest superstar. USA dominated the tournament and won the gold medal. The rivalry between Larry Bird and Magic Johnson saved the NBA. Their star power gave the NBA an identity and their basketball talents inspired multiple generations of amazing players. They even helped break down many racial barriers that allowed for future greats to flourish. But to Bird and Magic, it was all about basketball. They may have been completely different people, but they shared a love and passion for the sport that was undeniable, and their incredible battles on the court transcended basketball. And while they may have started out as bitter rivals, both men ended their careers together, not just as teammates, but as friends.